I have three of these boards that I just bought at a thrift store a long time ago. Somebody had made a sign out of them and they'd been really heavily distressed. And I sanded them. I don't even remember what they used to say. There was something written on them. I don't remember what it was. It's been years. So I'm just painting them with Fusion's casement, which is almost a bright, bright white. Because I want to use these for the IOD paint inlay. I'm gonna be putting some florals from Melange on here. Okay, so that's pretty much full coverage. And then I'm just going to give it a spritz because I want to wipe it back. So I don't really want that writing to show through. So I'm kind of being careful on where I'm wiping, but I'm really getting those edges. And you can kind of see that little bit of they had a gray stain on here. So now I'm just going to let these dry and then I'm actually going to do another wash with a gray on top. So once these dry, I'll be right back. Okay, so I was going to go with a gray wash, but I changed my mind because in my cupboard I found this can of ash that is pretty much empty. So I'm just going to add water quite a bit to this and kind of stir it around and make a wash out of that, hopefully. It's looking like it's working pretty good. And this is pretty simple. So this is mostly water. There was only like remnants in the bottom kind of edge down here. It was pretty much empty. So I probably put, I don't know, two, three ounces of water in there, maybe a half a cup. It's pretty watery. Oh yeah. And I'm just gonna brush this on And I'm not being super picky, but I'm trying to get it everywhere. Including my table, apparently. Okay, and now I wet this cloth. So I am just gonna go and wipe this back now. Perfect. Okay, so there's one. And I've got two more. go. We have the three boards painted and kind of glazed. And 
one's a little bit darker, so I want to put that one in the middle. Perfect. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to wash this stuff and I will be right back. So I'm going to be using the Melange Paint Inlay. This is from the latest release. You get these eight pages. So far I've used this page. And today we're gonna to use this page. Well, these three pieces out of it. So there's eight sheets in each one. And I'm going to use this one. So first of all, I'm going to cut the fork and spoon out. We'll use that on something else at a later date. And I'm going to cut these out as separate pieces. Remember when you're using inlays that when you're looking at it like this on your carrier sheet, you actually are going to be applying the image this way. So you have to remember to, to flip them over. You're, you're working in that reverse when you're planning it out. That'll help you, help you plan it out a little bit easier. I'm going to put these together because I kind of want them. I want them to be even. Okay, that's pretty good. Not going for perfection, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So I'm just going to put a tiny little pencil mark down here where the bottom of the transfer sheets should go. So that gives me a close enough estimation to them all being even. Okay. So I'm going to be using clear patina again to apply these inlays because I always like to work on a painted surface that kind of my backdrop is all done. So this is DIY Paints Clear Patina. This works good for decoupage and it works really good for applying inlays as well. Um, I'll use this brush because it's clean. This is the one of the newest Klingons. This is the angled um, FA40. So I have these in stock if you're looking for those too. Now remember your inlays are applied into wet paint or in this case, case wet clear patina. So I'm making sure I really have that on there. And then just basically going to line that up with my pencil mark. I'm just eyeballing this for, for it being straight. Make sure I have enough. And I'm going to use just a piece of saran wrap or plastic wrap, I guess I should say, to really smush this inlay down because this wood is so textured. I really want to make sure it's in there. And this plastic food wrap also helps alleviate friction so you don't tear your paper. Okay, there's one. Let's work on the second one. So this does look milky going on here, but it dries crystal clear. 
See, no worries with that. Need some more. Just want to make sure I have a good solid coat on here. It's a little bit different than applying decoupage where decoupage you want that good coat but you don't want it to be too 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 wet or too thick. You want it to be a little bit thicker applying the inlays so there's some substance for that your inlay to sit into. And the wrinkles don't matter. Okay, put that one aside. One more. one and I'm just using that little pencil mark I put at the bottom as just kind of a little guide so what's happening is the dampness the wetness of the paint is what is activating the paint on the carrier paper so your inlay itself and it helps it embed itself into your wet paint okay so now we need to wet these backing papers It just helps release it. And I'm going to, I forgot a wet cloth, so baby wipe it is. And I'm just going to use that to help push this inlay into my, into the wood. Into the paint on the wood, basically. Okay, so now we have to let this dry and then we'll come back and we will take these backing sheets off. Okay, so these are all dry now. So now I'm gonna wet them. So we'll just start with this one. And I'm just gonna give it a mist. And you wanna make sure the full thing is wet, the, the full paper because you gotta peel all that paper back. And I don't have a cloth again, so I'm going to just use a baby wipe again. And then we will gently Peel this now you're not going to get a perfect inlay a transfer happening here because this is very textured so it's pretty much impossible to get it right down into all those little nooks and crannies but 
it's just adding to that very distressed kind of look. And I think it turned out really good. I'll bring this up so you can see it. So it looks really pretty. It's the same process on the other two. There we go. So all three are done. I'm just gonna give these a quick buzz with the heat tool. Okay, so now if you've watched previous videos, you know that this step is really important. So I get these little squirt bottles from the dollar store. So they're cheap, they're, they, work, they work perfectly for this. And this is Big Top and water mixed 50-50. So I just put it in one of these with the little spout on them, also from the dollar store. Um, dollar Tree, I think, these. And this is leftovers from my last project, so it, the Big Top will settle out of the water, so I'm just gonna give it a shake to make sure it's all mixed. And then, what I'm going to do is pour it into this little squirt bottle. Perfect. The reason why we're doing this is because these inlays are made out of a chalk style paint. So if you go to brush a sealer on top of this now, you could very easily smear it and you don't want to do that. So this 50-50 big top and water or any water-based sealer, just water it down so you can put it in a squirt bottle and you can easily seal these. So now I'm just going to spritz my inlay. And I got a couple pretty heavy globs came out of this one at first. So I just a quick dab like that and not a wipe. To get rid of that big blotch. And there you go. Now we're gonna let this dry completely and we'll come back and do it again and then we can brush over to give it a nice even, a nice even coat.